Today we're going to go over the startup and maintenance procedures for this ES450 RFCA drinking water chiller. Uh, a chiller like this would typically be hooked up to a central drinking water loop that would serve all the drinking fountains, wash fountains, bottle fillers, etc. Um, that would serve drinking water in a building. These large drinking water chillers are typically installed on a concrete slab. Um, before putting the unit in place, you want to make sure that all the doorways and the clearances uh, for the unit to fit where it needs to go will work. When the chiller is finally in place, uh, you're most likely going to have insulated hard piping hooked up to all three ports, the cold water discharge, the return line, and the water in. The installing contractor is responsible for putting shutoff valves on all of these ports. Additionally, we recommend a bleeder valve on the return line uh, to aid in bleeding the air from the entire loop. Along with the shutoff valves on the ports of the chiller, the installing contractor is also responsible for the power disconnect to be installed within arm's reach of the chiller cabinet. At this point, it's a good idea to check the clearances around the chiller. Uh, they'll be listed in your manual. We recommend at least 100 centimeters on the front of the unit where the uh, ports are, where the electrical box is. Additionally, you'll want 100 centimeters on the back end of the unit and the right side so you can take off the panels and access those components. Another thing to check is on the back side of the unit, on the left side, uh, that you have at least 60 centimeters clearance so that the air intake is not impeded. Secondly, you'll want to make sure there aren't any HVAC equipment, heat generating equipment on that side of the chiller that could possibly be blowing hot air into the intake. Now let's go over a few of the tools needed to perform this startup procedure. A tape measure is a good idea to check the clearances around the unit. You may need a couple of adjustable wrenches, a 7 16 wrench for putting the pump plug back into the pump, some refrigeration wrenches, a 7 16 nut driver, both a flat and Phillips screwdriver, a pair of wire clippers for clipping the tags and the manual out of the interior of the cabinet, it's a good idea to have a flashlight and also an amp probe and a voltmeter for checking the electrical connections. Okay, so now let's go ahead and remove the panels for the startup. You're going to want to remove both the top and bottom panels on the right side of the unit here, um, both panels on the electrical box, and also the panels on the rear of the unit that will give you access to the filter and sterilizer package. To take the bottom panels off, you want to take your nut driver, and there are some bolts down here that secure them. Each panel has one or two bolts in it, uh, but you're going to want to take these off. To take these top panels off, you put, put your uh, fingers in the grommets here, lift up, trimming them down, and make sure you place them in a safe place where they won't be bent or damaged. Once we have the panels off, you can go ahead and locate your manual inside the chiller cabinet. It's going to be held in there with a, wa with a wire tie. The front cover of the manual gives your basic information on the chiller, like job, job location, model number, and serial number. The first page has a copy of the chiller tag, which is also located in the electrical box, giving electrical information and information on, on the refrigerant charge. Following that are various pages with more in-depth information on various components and the specifications for this unit. You'll also inside the manual have instructions on filling your drinking water chiller and the startup procedure that we'll be going over now. The basic chiller components inside the cabinet are the electrical box, um, all of your plumbing connections on this side of the chiller. You have your recirculating pump, UV sterilizer. Sometimes the UV sterilizer may be located in the purifier cabinet on the other side of the chiller. Further down, you have your compressor, the receiver, 
your condenser and fans back there. And then down here you have your storage type evaporators and storage tanks. Uh, these are stainless steel tanks and coils wrapped with insulation and then sheet metal to hold that in insulation in place. Um, this particular unit has two tanks for a total of 450 gallons of stored water. On the back side of the chiller you have the purifier cabinet. Uh, in this case you have two pre-filters and then four carbon block filters in line. Um, this is your wrench for removing the bottom of the filter or purifier housings. This unit is also equipped with a phosphate feeder uh, that feeds glassy phosphate into the system to coat the inside of the pipes and uh, prevent any leaching of uh, metals or copper or anything like that. Before installing the filter or purifier elements, you're going to want to check to make sure that they're in the right order. This particular unit has two purifier elements meant to take out big particulates and debris and four carbon block elements, removing chlorine taste and odor um, from the water going into the system. Before filling the unit with water, you're going to want to open up the box that contains all the consumables for the chiller. These consumables will include purifier elements, the bottoms of the filter and purifier housings, particulate filter elements, phosphate for the phosphate feeder, and also your UV sterilizer components such as a quartz sleeve, O-rings, gaskets, and your UV bulb. To install one of these purifier elements, simply slide the element over the standpipe, ensuring that all the holes are covered. Then, you want to check the inside of the purifier or filter housing to ensure the O-ring is in place. Put the housing over the element and tighten onto the manifold. These only need to be hand tight, even though there is a wrench provided if one gets stuck. Every filter housing has a ball valve on the inlet and outlet side um, for isolation and maintenance. Along with installing the filter and purifier elements, you're going to want to fill the phosphate feeder up to the fill line with glassy phosphate that can be found in your consumables kit. Some scheduled maintenance things to keep in mind for this chiller are regular cha filter cartridge and purifier cartridge changes. I recommend changing these elements every four months or as needed. Um, the phosphate, it depends on water usage. You just want to kind of keep an eye on it and make sure that the phosphate isn't completely depleted. You may need to uh, refill it to the fill line every four or six months. The pump plug will be located in the electrical box um, and you're going to want to make sure you install this before moving forward with the startup procedure. So along with putting the pump plug in, you are going to want to install the quartz sleeve uh, into the UV sterilizer. You can do that by putting the O-ring provided in the box um, in the purifier cabinet on the quartz sleeve like that, snapping the gland nut on top of it like that, and then installing it into the UV sterilizer housing and hand tightening for a good seal. Additionally, the UV sterilizer requires regular maintenance. Once a year, the UV bulb inside the sterilizer should be replaced. At that same time, you can take the quartz sleeve out and clean or replace it depending on its condition. Okay, at this point, we've installed the uh, pump plug. We can go ahead and start filling the unit. You can open up these silcocks, bleed the air out, and then turn on your water in to put some pressure in. It should take a little while for all the air in the tanks, the piping, and the uh, purifier and filter housings to drain out. Once you get a steady stream of water out of these ports, you can go ahead and close them. 
and the water's filled up. Once the unit's filled with water, there are two bypass valves that you're going to want to close. Um, the first bypass is on this phosphate feeder. Uh, you can close that. The second one is this tuning bypass valve, which is actually, you're going to want to close. Um, we may go back to this later once we get the unit all started up to sort of tune how much pressure we're sending through the, through the loop. Um, but for now, we can just close it. To begin the initial startup of the refrigeration system, you're going to have to go ahead and open up all of the refrigeration service valves labeled with these yellow tags. Uh, there are two on, one on either side of the compressor, and then there are three more, one on either side of the receiver, and then one right here that are going to be, need to be opened. To open up one of these refrigeration valves, you need to remove the cap, slightly loosen the packing, Start backing out the valve stem all the way until it's completely backseated. For a valve that's hooked up to gauges, after it's backseated, you'll want to turn it back in about a quarter of a turn. This is going to allow gas and pressure to go to the gauges. After you're done doing that, you can tighten down the packing to avoid any leaks and repeat this process with all of the refrigeration valves in the circuit. Now that the refrigeration system is all opened up, we can go ahead and uh, turn on the main power disconnect. And now we're going to go over to the pump and make sure that the phase is correct. Once the main power is on, you got to trip the breaker for the pump. So to turn the pump on and check the rotation, the switch on the top left here is the manual on off. We're just going to bump that on and off and you or an assistant can check the rotation of the pump using a flashlight. So with either you or your assistant manning the on off switch, you can use your flashlight to get a good look at the drive shaft on the pump. Make sure that it's matching the arrow on the pump housing. Uh, if it's not, then the phasing is incorrect and you'll need to switch two of the three legs on the main power supply. Inside the electrical box, you have your main power leads. Additionally, you have your customer connection leads, which are purple. Um, this is for any remote alarms or building management system. You also have your breakers for your, for your recirculating pump and your refrigeration system. Both of the breakers will be off, so to turn on either of those systems, you need to turn on the breaker. Up here is your orange refrigeration trap. The unit shipped with the fuse removed from that trap, um, so you have to put that in to start the refrigeration. Right here is your UV sterilizer board. Uh, this controls the UV sensor to tell you if the sterilizer is working properly or not. On the front of the unit, your basic components and layout, you have silcox for bleeding the air out during filling, your refrigeration gauges, which will show your pressures, discharge temperature gauge, manual remote on-off switch, your pump run light, sterilizer on light, manual sterilizer on off switch and then your alarm lights change filter service sterilizer low temp cutout oil pressure failure and thermal overload here you'll also find a copy of your unit tag giving you technical information on the chiller down here are knockouts for both your electrical connection and your customer connections. This would be a building management system, a remote alarm, something like that. So before starting the refrigeration system, we want to double check our set point for our thermostat. Uh, here we have it set for 45 degrees. Additionally, you want to take a look at the low temp cutout set point. Uh, right now we have it set for 40 degrees. Alright, so now finally we can turn on both of these breakers. Turn on our pump and sterilizer. 
As you can see, we had a couple of alarms go off. Uh, we have an oil pressure failure and a service sterilizer alarm. So to take care of that oil pressure alarm, which is a common, uh, commonly will come on during startup, you want to hold down the reset button on the oil pressure safety switch. You'll hear the solenoid valve trip and your alarm light should go off, your compressor should start. To address the service sterilizer alarm light, you'll look to the UV sensor board inside the electrical box. This is going to come preset at the factory, shouldn't require adjustment. However, if it does, there's a sensitivity adjustment right here that can be modified with a small Phillips head screw. After the unit's been running for about 20 minutes and is equalized, then we can go ahead and check the amp draw and the different components. You're going to want to compare the legs of the compressor leads, the pump leads, and any other components to the information on the unit tag. Check each one of the legs and make sure it falls in the acceptable range. If your pump happens to be drawing too many amps, you may need to adjust the bypass valve on the return line. If your pump is drawing too many amps, you may need to adjust the bypass valve on this return line, hereby allowing some of the water to bypass the loop and putting less pressure on the pump itself. This is what we call tuning the unit, and it's dependent on the specifics of your installation. You want to make sure sufficient flow throughout the loop, but also you're not overamping the pump. Next, you're going to want to test the set point and make sure the unit turns off when it reaches temperature. You can do this by either waiting until the unit cools to the temperature that you've set, or you can raise the set point temporarily up uh, to make sure the unit cycles off. You're also going to want to test the low temp cutout. You can do this by raising the set point on the cutout and making sure that the unit shuts off. The low temp cutout to its original set point and the unit should come on, the alarm light should go off. So we've tested our alarms, now we want to, before buttoning up, we want to make sure that our set point is at 45, our low temp cutout set point is at 40, and now we're ready to button up the chiller. To begin buttoning up the unit, we're going to want to backseat all of the refrigeration valves. all the way back, tighten down the packing, and replace the caps. Repeat that procedure for all five refrigeration service valves. After ensuring that you haven't left any tools or anything uh, inside the chiller cabinet, you can begin to replace the panels. You're going to want to put the lower panels on first. They go on like that, and then replace the bolts at the bottom of each lower panel. So after the uh, securing bolts are put on the lower panels, all the lower panels are on, you can go ahead and put the top panels on the same way you took them off. This concludes the startup video for this ES450 RFCA drinking water chiller. Thank you very much for watching.